are. We are ready when you are. Illness is everywhere. It is in the air that we breathe, on the surfaces we touch, and even the food that we eat. When I read Catholic Nation by Eric Schlosser, one chapter in particular actually stood out for me, and now it's chapter nine. Does anybody re re remember what that chapter was about? What's it mean? Eat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And E. coli. So, well, there's what it looks like. I kind of became c c concerned with it because with the whole H1N1 flu we have going around, I've been concerned with my health, and then when I read that, I'm like, great, something else I need to worry about, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I did a bunch of research, and one of the, uh, Actually, that, that's actually where I get all my uh, pictures from. All, well, the, the links are listed below the pictures. And two of the places I went to, website-wise, were msnbc.com and usatoday.com. Now, for those of you who may or may not remember or, did, or who did not get up to that chapter, E. coli is, well, one of the ways it's spread is in the uh, slaughterhouse. And if a carcass, as seen here, is not cleaned properly, any dirt or manure that's infected that's on it could easily get onto the meat when they yank it out. That, that's just one way it can contaminate me. I was actually surprised to find out that it can be in more food than just the meat. So today, I'm gonna take you on a little family dinner type of deal, and I'm gonna show you how E. coli can be in the appetizer, the main course, mm. and the dessert. Mm. So let's start with the appetizer. How many of you guys like salad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same here, <laughs> especially with ranch. Really, really good, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I was surprised to find out that bag lettuce um, actually is second only to ground beef as far as contamination goes. Okay. The Food and Drug Administration have reported 19 outbreaks since 1995, with 425 people ill and two have died. So why is it so legal? Mainly because there's no heat steps. When you go to a restaurant where you cook your own steak, you can have it well done. But the less pink is the better because if it's black, the E. coli is it, it's probably dead. And the rarer you go, the more likely it is you will get sick. Here you have no heat step. So if these are improperly cleaned, the E. coli will be on there. It'll get in the bag. It'll come to your house. Guess what? It'll go in your stomach. You know, there's a, it's actually kind of unknown how the E. coli gets in there, but the main theory that I could find is that creek beds that are contaminated with it can flood where the, where the uh, crop is grown and therefore contaminate it. Let's add strawberries. Strawberries have the fuzz on. And the fuzz actually makes it more difficult to clean. In addition to that, strawberries are, are grown in close contact to soil and manure. So the fuzz can easily pick up some of that manure, and if it's co contaminated with the E. coli, you can ingest it if you do not wash it well enough. And it's hard to wash anyway. However, scientists over at Purdue University are experimenting with a way to blast these strawberries with chlorine dioxide gas. And that will actually remove the fuzz and kill any E. coli that might be on there. Now let's wash it down with water. I find out that the city of Phoenix recycled its water, which means that the toilet you used before coming to class today, the water that you flushed down, might be in your drink in two weeks from now. Either that or it won't be in your shower. So don't get me wrong. The water treatment plan is very good. But if it improperly cleans that water and is inadequate in separating the waste from the water, any E. coli that might be in there can easily get into your house. Moving on to the main course, or the meat potatoes, if you will. Let's start with spinach. And uh, according to an article published in 2006, Dole brand spinach made 146 people sick in 23 states, including Arizona. One person died. 76 were hospitalized, some of whom had kidney failure. Again, it's kind of unknown as to how exactly these spinach became infected, but it's possible that manure from grain-fed cattle got into the groundwater, and then when everything was irrigated, there you go. Potato salad, who likes potato salad? I'm one of the few exceptions. <laughs> I hate potato salad. So according to an article published in 2007, Guess how many people in the Chicago area became ill after eating potato salad? 116. More. Try 4,000 in the Chicago area alone. <laughs> they, became, they became sick after eating potato salad and related products from Iwin's Deli. Let's wash that down with some raw milk. According to an article published in 2008, retail raw milk or unpasteurized milk made seven people sick, two of whom were aged two and seven years old. 
One of them was on dialysis. Now, if you don't know what dialysis is, that is a treatment to remove the blood to I mean, toxin from your blood when your kidneys are no longer functioning. Pasteurization is also the only method known to remove pathogens from the milk. And according to an article on Magnut.com, Magnut? Yeah, Magnut uh, unsanitary milking practices are to blame. And uh, they have a little quote in there that reminded me of something Eric Schlosser said in his book. There is quote unquote shit in the milk. <laughs> so now let's move on to dessert, particularly with cookie dough. In June of 2009, in Virginia, Nestle refrigerated and Toll House cookie dough made 70 people sick, 30 of whom were hospitalized. Fortunately, no deaths. It's unknown, however, it's possible that cross contamination or a sick worker contributed to the contamination. The Nestle plant was briefly shut down with 200 layoffs. And uh, actually, in August of this year, Kim Schultz, as pictured here, did, uh, done it in New Zealand, did some research on scoops or vanilla ice cream in her area. She went to 17 different dairies in the Dunedin area, and one third of which had E. coli in their ice cream. This E. coli was not lethal, but the shiga toxins in it could make you extremely ill. Unsanitary working conditions were to blame. Let's do coffee. Being in college, a lot, a lot of you probably drink a lot of coffee, right? I don't. I stick to my, to my, co to my uh, caffeine, thank you. This coffee actually does not have E. coli in it, but you might not want to drink coffee after you hear about it. Um, a uh, special type of coffee actually is made with the help of this particular animal. It is a cat-like mammal known as the Asian palm gazette of Indonesia and the Kopi Luwak bean. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering, okay, what does that and that have to do with coffee, right? <coughs> Basically, they feed the bean to the kibbit, it passes through the digestive tract, and then they collect it. That is kibbit poo. They roast the kibbit poo <laughs> in this type of a process. The beans are put into the top, water is boiled in the bottom, it boils up and mixes with the beans. You can take it home in a bag like that, or you can take it home in a one cup serving, such as that. Eventually, it will look like that, like normal coffee. The only local place I could find that does this is Bennett's Fresh Roast in Fort Myers, Florida. Now, he will roast the beans at 600 degrees Fahrenheit and brew the coffee at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which will kill any E. coli that might be in there. This stuff is expensive, too. 12 ounces of it, which is basically the weight of 10 envelopes, 20 bucks for that, for basically poop. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're done with our meal, thank God, um, I, hope you know that e. coli, I hope you know that E. coli can be found in more than just slaughterhouse meat. It can be in lettuce, ice cream, milk, you name it. But don't let that scare you from what you're eating, because we all take risks. If you live, you're taking a risk anyway. So don't be afraid in what you're eating, because anything can happen. You know. Just take care of your personal hygiene, take care of how you prepare your food, and take care of how you cook your food. Be careful of where you go, especially fast food. In, it, in any case, in two weeks, I will be back and I will be talking to you about why you should not change your diet and why you should not let fear, such as E. coli, keep you from your daily habits. In Foster's words, have it your way. Oh, that's good.